Have you ever tried kaju burfi? All these chocolates and burfis are making my mouth water. Okay, the shape of the kaju burfi is familiar to us. Opposite sides are parallel and equal to each other. They are known as parallelograms. But how did we get this parallelograms? For this, let's take a simple rectangle A B C D. Now, I will hold the vertices C and D and move them along the line CD, holding the vertices A and B fixed. Can you see what's happening? The lines AB and CD are still parallel and equal to each other, but the angles are no longer 90. This figure we just got is a parallelogram. In fact, all squares and rectangles are special parallelograms which have got angles of 90 degrees. Will the perimeter of this parallelogram be the same as the rectangle that we saw before? Yes or no? Well, I presume most of you would have said a yes because I did that when I first looked at it. But the answer is unfortunately a no. This is because the more we move C and D along CD, the lengths of AD and BC will increase. Why do you have to believe me? Well, if you were to observe this part, it looks like a right angle triangle, right? As you keep moving the point, the line from being a side is now becoming the hypotenuse. And we know that the hypotenuse is longer than any side of a triangle. So, the length is increasing. So, the overall perimeter will always increase. But what about the area? Will they remain the same for the rectangle and the parallelogram? Before you try answering this, let me first tell you how to calculate areas of any parallelogram. You can actually guess the answer to this question because you know the area of the square and the rectangle. And also, these figures are actually parallelograms. That is what we basically said. They were special cases of parallelograms. Well, there is a small change required. It's very simple. Let's look at how to derive the area of a parallelogram. Take any parallelogram, A, B, C, D. Pick any side that you want. Let's say we pick A, B. From the opposite vertex D, drop a perpendicular to A, B at E. This distance, D, E, is known as the height of the parallelogram for the corresponding base. Remember that term, for the corresponding base. Now cut triangle A, E, D from the parallelogram and move it towards the right. Wait, did we get a rectangle? Yes, we did. It is a rectangle. Let's rename it as P, Q, R, S. So the area of this rectangle will be equivalent to length into breadth, that is P, Q times Q, R. Also, this area should be equal to the area of the parallelogram A, B, C, D, since we did not bring anything extra here. We just moved one part of the parallelogram from one place to the other. Now, let's compare the two figures, that is the rectangle and the parallelogram. We see that PQ equivalent to AB and DE equivalent to QR. So, the area of the parallelogram ABCD should be equivalent to AB times DE, that's equivalent to base times height. This is true for all parallelograms, including the squares and the rectangles. It so happens in the case of squares and rectangles that the height is equivalent to one of its side. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.